Hello humanoids. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. This video we are going to discuss the topic of expressions, operators, and operator precedence and associativity. Bunch of fancy words means really simple stuff. So we're gonna go over it, it's gonna be lots of fun. But you know what else is lots of fun? Building great C++ applications. And you can do this with our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. C++ Builder is an IDE that allows you to take C++ code, a single C++ code base, and deploy that to multiple destinations. So Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. This IDE gives you all the tools you need to develop in C++. So you get a debugger, you get the capability to make user interfaces, you get integration with databases and APIs, and you get the awesome deployment possibilities. Do me a favor, go click the link in the description, go check them out and give them a try. Now let's get back to all that other junk. Now what is an operator? The very simple example is doing addition. The plus is an example of an operator. I think we talked about this already in the series and this stuff's pretty basic. The fives are example of operands. So what an operator is, is it'll do something on operands. In this case, it'll add them together. Another operator you've seen is the assignment operator. So if we do something like this, this assignment operator will assign six to the variable x. Well, there are all kinds of operators inside of C++ and in programming in general. You can go through all of them if you desire, just look up C++ operators and learn every single one of them. What we're gonna be going over in this video is we're gonna to touch on some of the arithmetic operators, which is really simple, should only take just a minute. And then we're going to be talking about operator precedence and associativity, which is a very important piece of C++ programming and basically every programming language in existence. So first off, let's go through creating a variable. We can still name it X and we can assign it a value, but instead of putting a literal, what we're gonna do is we're going to put what's known as an expression, such as five plus five. So an expression is basically when we use these operators to evaluate to a single value. In this case, five plus five is going to evaluate to 10 and 10 is going to be assigned to X. Well, the plus operator is just one of the operators you should know about. There's also the minus operator, which will give us zero. There's the multiplication operator, which will give us 25. And there is the division operator, which will give us one. Now, the very important thing to know with the division operator is it's going to use integer division if you're dividing with two integers. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's say we had the value 10 and we wanted to divide this by four. Well, you would naturally think this would be 2.5, but it's not. When we output this, watch what we get you can see we get the value two. So originally we had 2.5, but this is a floating point number and it's not going to work when we're using integer division. So it basically crops that to two. I'll show you how to fix that, but I just want to show you guys that even if we store this inside of a double, we're going to get that same result. We still get two. So in order to fix this, we need to put a dot on one of these or a dot zero to say that this is a floating point value. Now it's going to use double division and it's going to be stored inside of a double so it's going to maintain that double status. So now when we compile and run, we should get 2.5. So you can see here the importance of understanding how the operators work to make sure we get the correct results. You know what I'm saying? Last one I wanted to talk about is the modulus operator. So the modulus operator, the way this works is it's going to do division and keep the remainder. So 10 divided by four, what is the remainder of that? Well, four goes into 10 two times with two left over. So we should get two. And indeed we did. Now this operator is one of those magical operators where it seems kind of simple and not that useful at the beginning, but there are tons of algorithms that take use of the modulus operator. So make sure you get some practice with, oh my gosh, Claire, really? <sighs> Hitting up my Instagram, kind of slide into my DMs. I don't even know what I was saying. Basically, you should understand the modulus operator. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about operator precedence. This is the order in which things get evaluated. So here's this big chart you can look at and bore yourself with, but basically everything is grouped into these precedence containers. So the very first precedence is the scope resolution operator, then the next group, and then so forth. So the ones we're working with are right here. So we have multiplication, division, and remainder, and then addition and subtraction. So multiplication and division happen first. As you guys know from math class, they have that pepimdes or what is it? Parentheses, powers, multiplication, whatever. 
basically the order of operations. So if we go in here and make this 10 plus four divided by three, the four divided by three is going to happen first. And you'll definitely wanna make sure you have one of these as a double if you wanna use double division. So if you wanted to visualize this, you can put parentheses around this, which is legal by the way. So you can compile, it's going to let you do that. So if you wanna be very explicit on what you're trying to do, make sure you throw them parentheses in there, not only for your sake, but for other developers sake who are going to have to read your code. Cause sometimes you get these crazy algorithms and when you make them, it makes sense. But then a year down the road, you have no idea what they're doing. So that's the concept of precedence. The next one is the associativity, which is the direction that these get evaluated in. So for the example of the arithmetic operators we've been using, it's left to right. Meaning if we have two that are in the same precedence group, then it goes from left to right. So let's go through an example. If we have 10 times four times three, it's going to automatically be grouped like so. The 10 times four is going to happen first. Now that only happens if they're in the same level of precedence. So it's kind of like a tiebreaker. When two things have the same precedence, we either let the one on the left go first or the one on the right go first. The associativity we're most familiar with is left to right. It's the most natural, but some of these are right to left. So for example, the assignment operator. This one is right to left. This can be a little bit confusing, and honestly, most of the time, you're not really going to have to worry about associativity. If there's ever a point where it's not clear, just be explicit and add those parentheses in anywhere you want things to happen first. But let's go through an example with the right to left associativity with the assignment operator. Let's say we have a double X and we have a double Y. And let's say X is equal to 10. Now what I'm going to do is this. Here, just copy this here for a second. There we go. So what exactly is going to happen here? Well, let's do some output and see the results we get. So we're going to output X, then we're gonna put a tab, and then we're gonna output Y. Well, I can tell you what's gonna happen. Because the associativity is right to left, the grouping is going to look like this. So 100 is going to be assigned to X, and then that value is going to be assigned to Y, so the values are going to be 100 and then 100. We run this and we get 100, 100. Awesome. Let's say in theory it was left to right, the grouping would look like this. And in this situation, Y would be assigned the value 10 and then Y would be reassigned the value 100. So it would be like this. Y is assigned X and then Y is assigned 100. If we broke it out into two separate statements, these are the two statements it would produce. So in this situation, X doesn't actually get reassigned anything, so it should remain the value 10. And you can see we get 10 for X and then 100 for Y. So that is how we can see associativity in its importance. Most of the times the things we're gonna be doing is left to right, but you should understand right to left as well. And if you ever need to force a certain evaluation order, you can use parentheses to do that. Such as in this situation, I made the left one happen first using parentheses. So that's all I got for you guys on operator precedence and associativity. Hopefully this video was super awesome. Check out the next one because it's going to be even greater because we're going to be talking about probably typecasting and type promotion. But we'll see when we get there. <laughs> see you guys in the next one. <laughs>